First thing you want to check if your top is not going up or down is your fluid level. And down here you can see my fluid level is pretty low. It should be between these two triangles. And uh, that's why I'm having trouble uh, putting the top uh, up. So um, I'm going to go ahead and fill that. I'm just using uh, Mercedes Hydraulic Oil, ZHM there i just got a syringe from cvs and a little piece of hose and you just take these two screws out here these two uh plugs here they're uh just hex a hex wrench just takes them out i take both of these out i don't know if you need to or not but i just do both and you just have to slowly squeeze it in there it just takes some time and patience you gotta squeeze it in there I'll let it go down and it takes some time. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, I've got that all filled up. Um, I filled it to the uh, bottom of that top triangle there and uh, put the plugs in. Uh, that went pretty quick. It only took me about two minutes. Uh, normally that takes me about 10 minutes. Uh, the only thing I can think of why it went quicker is because I haven't raised or lowered the top for a few days. Uh, so I put about uh, half this cup in. That's about a 12-ounce cup. So I put about six ounces in it. So somewhere in the car, there's uh, six ounces of this fluid spilled all over the place. Okay, now I'm going to need to uh, find the cylinder that's leaking. Um, I can start here and uh, pull this back a bit. And this plastic uh, trim piece might come off of the edge here but you can pull this back and then put your fingers underneath this cylinder here and see if there's oil underneath that and then you can do the same thing on the other side here so that's two and three is uh let me turn on the light there three is down there uh in the back of the car and you can feel there and see if there's any oil around there or on the bottom and uh, those are the three in the back of the trunk here um, if you've got oil dripping back here like on top of the uh, this piece here or down there uh, it might be your uh, cylinder on the uh, front edge of the top here this one that's up here but that one also makes your uh, trim piece all wavy here if this is all wavy then uh, I would suspect that cylinder is leaking there so next we want to check the ones in here you can see right there is the cylinder and you can uh, feel underneath there to see if that one's leaking and on the other side the same thing and I have already checked those and there is no fluid underneath either one of those cylinders so I'm going to need to lower the top and uh, take off a trim piece to check the rest of them here that's why I filled this up so, so that I can uh, put the top down. Okay, I've gotten the, uh, the top to go down and we need to remove this cover here so we can see the, uh, I think it's called the load assist cylinder. So to take this thing off, we need to take this cap off here. There's four screws holding it on, torque screws. There's two on top here and two on the bottom. And uh, just keep note, two of them are short, two of them are long. And you can just pull that off. And next there is a screw down in there. You can see it. We can't get to it. So we need to get this piece here to raise up. And to do that, we just come in the back and hit the load assist button here. So the top comes up and you can see that piece come up. And now we can uh, 
get to that screw there. It's right, right there. Okay, I've got that screw out. Now we're going to go ahead and lower this back. Before you lower this roof panel here, uh, remove that screw on the driver's side that we just did on the passenger side because you're going to need to take those panels off also to get to the lock paw on the driver's side. And if you can't lower and raise this thing for some reason, uh, you can do it manually. Uh, you just need to loosen the uh, pressure switch on the pump down there and then you can lift this up and then support it with a 2x4 there just to lift it enough so you can get to that screw. Uh, and I'll leave a link in the description on how you can uh, raise and lower the top manually. Okay, now uh, there is a bolt down here, right there. It's an 8 millimeter bolt, and you need to just loosen that. Okay, now we're ready to pull this thing off. Um, there's a fastener there and one here, so we're going to start over here and just lift up over here. You might have to move it side to side to get it up, but it will come up and then you can just pull it out. And there's the fasteners there. There's one there and one there. Uh, just be careful putting it back. Make sure that this rubber here is on top. And there's a little channel right in here where this uh, goes. That fits into the channel down there. And you've got also this piece that fits in that slot there. So just be careful with this piece when you put it back, especially with this door. Uh, my door on the other side is broken, so just be real careful with it. Now with that cover off, we can see the uh, this cylinder here that we already looked at from the back. And there's also one down there. I think that is the load assist cylinder. You can't really touch it or get down in there really good. You can put a mirror down there and see if you see any uh, fluid around this one down there. So the next one we're going to look at is the roll bar cylinder. And I'll give it away. That's the one that's leaking. So to get to that one, uh, we need to lift this piece up here, the sill, and be careful with it. Just do it straight up and don't twist it. Okay, and it comes off fairly easy. And now we can uh, move this rubber piece out of here, just pull it out and put it to the side there. And next, open this compartment here and remove and then uh, pull the top of this piece toward the front of the car and let that sit down. And we need to remove that screw right there, torque screw. And next is the hard part you need to uh, release the fasteners. Right there's one, and both of them are released. Right there, you can see the two black fasteners there. And then we need to pull it toward the front of the car. Uh, pull the bottom up first, and then the top slides down a little bit, and you can pull it out. And then you can see that there is sort of a hook there. So you sort of pull it out from the bottom first and then push it down a little bit and then pull it out toward the front. And hopefully, hopefully you won't break any plastic. Okay, so here is the uh, roll bar um, support assembly. And in the back there, you can see the uh, cylinder, the hydraulic cylinder. There's the rod for it. There's the clevis end right there. And it goes down. So it's back behind there. So uh, it's it's the one that's leaking. I, I uh, had a bunch of fluid at the bottom here. So that is the one we need to get out. 
At this point, you need to decide whether you want the top up or down. Once you take the uh, roll bar cylinder out, you won't be able to automatically put the top up. So uh, decide that now. Uh, you can put the top up manually, but it is a pain. Okay, now we're at this point where we need to take this assembly out. Uh, before you do anything, uh, you might want to put a mark right here on this arm and put a mark as precisely as you can on where this is at the moment uh, before you take everything apart. Uh, when you put it back together, if you can get it right back where you had it, then you're, uh, then you're good. So first thing we do, we take off this connector here, this orange one. Took me about five minutes to jimmy that out. Uh, cut the tie strap here. Take these two bolts out that are down here. There's one here and one behind there. I've already taken it out. So get those bolts out. And uh, when you put them back in, those are 25 Newton meters for these bottom bolts. The top bolt up here is 28 Newton meters. Okay, next you want to remove this cover. You slide it down. Now that was very easy because I've already had it off a few times. <laughs> um, and get that off. Uh, you gotta slide it down. Okay, get that thing off of there. If you can't slide it down, um, there is a little screw right here that you can take out and then you can open this a little bit and then with the screwdriver you can push that uh, plate down so let's take out that bolt now okay now let's remove the lock paw cylinder here you just put a wrench on there and then turn it 90 degrees and then you pull it back out uh, this plastic piece doesn't hold it in, it just keeps it from spinning. And be careful with it. See, I broke this one. Okay, so you've got the bottom bolts out, the top bolt, the connector removed, the tie strap cut. Now you need to uh, relieve the pressure of the pump in back, the hydraulic pump, with the uh, Allen key. To relieve the pressure of the pump, you go right in there with an Allen key and turn it counterclockwise. You can just do it a couple turns or to the stop if you want. Now the pressure is relieved. We're going to need to uh, defeat this uh, lock switch here. So we need a screwdriver to pull the spring back like that and then you can stick a wrench in there whoops that's too big that's even bigger you need the right size wrench I'm using a torque wrench here and sticking that in here and now it's holding the spring back which unlocks the lock on the teeth here you might need to push it a little bit that way because uh, it's not pushing all the way to the wall here we'll see now you need to push up on this whole assembly here so that you can compress that arm so i it's it's not going so i need to uh i need to move this wrench so that the spring goes all the way to the wall okay now it's released now i'm able to push this up and compress this thing. You just need to compress it enough so you can get it out. Whoops. Ah, crap. That might be enough. That is enough to get this out. Now you've got this thing out. You need to disconnect this yellow cable here, this, this connector. And you just push on the back there and pull it out just like that now you've got the two hoses here 
Obviously, you can see that I've already taken this out and finished it because I've got the connectors right here, the hydraulic uh, hose connectors, and I'll explain that when we pick it up. So you need to decide now if you want to cut these, get these connectors, or if you want to pull these hoses all the way back to the pump, which is going to be a lot of time. And I didn't want to do that because I thought, this, all this stuff is plastic. I didn't want to break anything. So I spent the extra money to get these connectors. And they're expensive. For this whole shebang, for, for this cylinder here and the two lock paw cylinders, it was $450. 450, 450 bucks to do that. Um, so you save yourself a lot of money if you pull these hoses out all the way to the pump. I've got the uh, assembly on the back seat now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these uh, hydraulic hose lines here. Um, I've marked them so I can tell which one is which. I've got the aluminum tape on one and no tape on the other one. And I've got a, uh, a uh, two by four block here so that I cut these with a razor blade. I need a nice clean 90 degree cut on these uh, so it'll, they'll fit good uh, with the new connectors that I'm, I'll be buying. I need both hands, so I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I've got those lines cut now. Um, put these little stoppers in there too, just in case it leaks out. It, uh, they don't they don't hold back a lot of pressure. They're just little rubber things. But uh, the lines were pretty easy to cut. Um, a lot of air rushed out of the first hose uh, that I cut. Uh, I haven't used the hydraulics probably at least four or five days, so. Uh, if you do this, hopefully you let it uh, let it settle down and so that there's zero pressure in there. I can see a lot of uh, oil gushing out of there if, if you do it uh, with, with some pressure in there. Okay, here's the uh, assembly on my bench now. You can see the actual cylinder right here. Here's the rod and here's the clevis. And it's attached to this uh, deployment cylinder here, this solenoid in a crash, um, the solenoid detaches from this clevis so that the roll bar can shoot up uh, with spring power from the other side of the car. Uh, there's no spring in this one. Uh, there's a spring on the other side. And the other side also does not have the hydraulic, um, the hydraulic cylinder. So first thing we need to do is uh, detach the solenoid from the uh, cleavers here. And to do that, you just take a little Allen wrench and push in there. And when you push in this, you can see that moving there, that releases the solenoid from the, from the cleavers here. So you can just pull it down and watch out. You might get some oil squirting out of the lines there when you do that. Uh, if the, if you've got your arm here all the way down, um, this spring here releases a lock. If you do that, then you can push it all the way down. And now it's actually locked right there too. So if yours is in this position, then it would be helpful to move the whole arm up. And so we do this with that retainer spring and then we can pull this up and there we go now you can uh, release that uh, next we want to uh, remove this um, 
this holding bracket here and that's pretty easy that just comes right out and then the cylinder just comes right out of here pretty easy all right so I'm gonna go ahead and send this off to uh, Cabrio hydraulics here in Florida and we'll pick this back up when I get the uh, cylinder back and the uh, couplers all right I sent off my uh, hydraulics to Cabrio hydraulics and it was sent back really quick uh, and this is how it came I got uh, a receipt and instructions and a nice sealed pack here and you can see they already put the connectors on here. So I'm just going to cut it open. So there they are. Here's some instructions on how to do this. And here's my beautiful cylinders back. Um, they've already put, like I said, they already put the connectors on the ends here. And they actually labeled the uh, lock paws right and left and you can see this one's 102 and 103 so that's how they probably knew which one's which but I marked them with some tape here before I took them off blue tape electrical tape and some aluminum tape so now it's time to uh, put it back together and also a note uh, left is the driver side right is the passenger side and uh, altogether this was uh, 450 bucks uh, to repair both cylinders or all three cylinders and get the couplers so total of 450 and I uh, didn't notice this at first but on the instruction page they have some uh, sandpaper here that you can use to uh, grab the hose with pliers so you don't damage the hose isn't that nice okay I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put the cylinder back into the uh, uh, support assembly here um, I've got the solenoid up and I have got the hoses that way so it should go in like this And then you've got this retainer here. It's got an arrow on it. If you can see it there, it should go up, which is that direction. And it will allow you to put it in backwards. So just make sure you got the arrow up. There. Now it's all now it's all together. Except for this. Now we gotta connect this rod. Let's see if I move that, I can move the rod up. And connect it to the solenoid there okay it is connected to the solenoid now and we should be ready to put it in uh, next uh, make sure you've got the nut on here uh, the instructions say to have that nut on there and then let's see I'm gonna hold it to where it's naturally gonna hang here and it wants you to push the hose in by hand okay I'm pushing it in is pretty good there okay next it wants you to take the coupler up so I've got that in there and it's supposed to butt up against figure D in the instructions and I'll show you a picture of that in a minute and once you put this hose in you you can't take it out um, it is nowhere near that coupler or the uh, oh well yeah it is it's supposed to the hose is supposed to butt up against D which is uh, a reference for a a part in there and it is not right now so next you want to take some pliers and sandpaper and push it in there 
And I'm going to do that now. I've already done this, but just to show you um, the sandpaper, put it on the, the gritty side, goes on the hose, and you take a, it's like a slip, slip joint pair of pliers and just twist it in there. Just push it in there as good as you can and twist it and to get it like the pictures I'm going to show you here. All right, that all looks connected right now, so I'm going to bring the uh, other half of the nut down and screw these together. Okay, I'm going to get uh, another wrench and I'll be back. Yeah, I've got a crescent wrench here and a 10 millimeter wrench, and that's about as far as I can tighten it there. And there's just a tiny gap right there between the connectors, but uh, uh, we'll see if that's okay or not. Okay, I've come on the right side here and uh, connected the two hydraulic lines for the uh, roll bar hydraulic cylinder here this way. I had it sitting down on my chair that way and connected them here. And I was able to get these connectors over here flush like this. Uh, so I went back to the first one and cranked on it a little bit and got it flush also. Okay, so now I got the, uh, the back two connectors connected in the back there. The connectors are behind this and slid this in. And I also put on the, uh, the yellow connector that's back there. So this is where I'm at now. I could uh, put that in there and then I still have to do the lock paw um, cylinder. And just a note here, um, when you put this yellow connector on, make sure you put the cable over the two hydraulic lines. Otherwise the hydraulic lines won't, won't route properly through this uh, tie strap channel here and down. All right, I've got uh, the assembly back in there. Um, when I put it in, I just put the top bolt in and put the uh, arm up, put the bolt in the arm, and then push this whole thing down so that I get these two, two bolts in. I just pushed it down to where the bolts went in. I didn't uh, look at any marks I made or anything, and uh, it is working now. Um, I can put the top down, or the uh, roll bar down, all the way, no leaks, and then back up again, and back down again. Now the first time I put it, the assembly back in there, it would not go down. Uh, the spring, I saw that this spring here was not moving back. So what happened is the lock inside of there was not really uh, centered right on the teeth and it just wasn't coming down. So what I had to do is loosen the two bolts down there, uh, relieve the pressure on the pump, and then push this whole assembly down a little bit. Um, that's where the teeth are right now to where it is working good. Uh, but it wasn't like that when I first put it in. It was just slightly off. So after I adjusted it, actually I adjusted it up a little bit and then I adjusted it down a little bit and then it started to work perfectly. So uh, that that lock in there uh, apparently doesn't, doesn't seat that well on those teeth if it's not in there right so uh, you might have to might have to do that to get it to to work right okay there was one last thing I had to do I had to adjust the roll bar 
the roll bar was going up, going down, going up, going down just fine. Uh, but it wasn't going down far enough. It was, it would stop about an inch from the top of the shelf here. The book shows that it should be level here. And I don't think it was uh, reaching the lower limit there because I could not operate the load assist for the trunk. So, um, when it's in a down position, you can push it down all the way there or, or level to the shelf here. Um, loosen those two bolts on the bottom of this assembly here and then push this down to where you want it and then tighten those bolts up and you should be good to go on a note here uh, when I first did this and lowered the roll bar and I was an inch from the shelf here and uh, tried to push it down to adjust it I could not push it down so I uh, put the roll bar up put it down put it up put it down until I could uh, push it down so I could adjust this thing um, but if you're not able to push that down to adjust it I'll leave a uh, link in the description on a uh, video to adjust the roll bar um, I'm just a home mechanic probably just like you guys so hopefully this uh, video helped you out so you can do it yourself uh, I can't imagine how much the dealer would charge to do this so uh, good luck everybody